It's a clean start. Keep your eyes on the woman in lane five. That is Florence Griffith from the United States. She's wearing a full body suit. She's the fastest woman in the world ever. I know that I'm not out there taking my clothes all off or revealing anything like that. It's just that the outfits are bringing attention. Where did the idea for the one bare-legged uh, running suit come from? I usually run in the, the two-leg bodysuit. And I was working on a new design, and I was in the mirror, and I was cutting the leg off. And I was in the mirror, I said, wow, that looks nice. And then I said, nah, I won't try it. And then I got some briefs that I wear now, and I put it over it, and I said, that's not a bad idea. Another of Florence's creations, a negligee running outfit, has transformed her into something of an international sex symbol. Well, you're becoming somewhat of a sex symbol. Is that... <laughs> <laughs> That's by accident, if I am. <laughs> um, no, that negligee, athletic negligee that I wore, uh, a lot of people were seeing, it's too revealing. But you can't just look at the negligee. There was an outfit that I had underneath. Um, after the trials, there were some comments made in the paper from some of the athletes uh, criticizing the outfits that I wore, uh, my hair, my nails, um, saying that it's too flashy. If you're wondering what fashion statement Florence will be making at the upcoming Olympics, she'll be wearing official Olympic garb. But just try and get a glimpse of her fingernails. She'll undoubtedly paint them in her usual rainbow of colors, adorned with rhinestones. This is the gold charm with rhinestones, two-toned. This is polished with a glittery coat, gold stripe and rhinestones. July 16th, 1988. Florence Griffith Joyner put on a skin-tight electric plum bodysuit. The unorthodox cut caught a lot of eyes, but the record books took note of something else that day. I got into the blocks, and I felt I had the, the most perfect start that I've ever had in my career. In 10.49 seconds, she shattered the 100-meter world record by a quarter of a second. Her breakneck speed was equivalent to 25 miles an hour. When I looked at the clock and I saw 10.49, I thought, wow, I was so excited. Exciting not only for Florence and the world, but for her coach, Al Joyner. He's an Olympic gold medal winner himself, and he's her husband. I was so excited. I jumped about 10 feet in the air. I ran about 40 yards. I was so happy for my wife because she did out, she ran an outstanding time and she ran an outstanding race and she was ready. In 84, she took the silver medal. Mm -hmm. So she was one step down from the gold medal. There's the gun, and it is a clean start, and it looks like a real good start for the American in lane four, Florence Griffith. She'll have a work cut out for her, trying to overtake the other American, Valerie Briscoe Hooks, who has already won one gold medal in these games. They're heading down the stretch, and it looks like it's going to be between Griffith and Valerie Briscoe Hooks, and crossing the finish line now, it will be Valerie Briscoe Hooks winning the gold medal, Florence Griffith the silver, and Merlene Ali Page the bronze. For more than 20 years, Florence has been living with one burning desire, to run and run, bursting down tracks around the world with blinding speed to beat the best. She's pounded out thousands of miles with passion and determination, with one ultimate goal in mind, with one ultimate quest, to capture the gold at the Olympics in Seoul, South Korea. I can really devote all my energies toward her bringing the gold back home because I have already received the gold medal and I'd like her to receive one too. Gosh, she's just the sweetest person. Al's been supporting me uh, with, the, with my athletic career. He was always there to give me the workout. He'll be running on the side of me, and what I wanted to do was get used to someone running on the side of me and then able to make my move. And Al was there, and he's trying his hardest to come for me. And that helped me in the 100 in the world record for him day after day running with me. In 
If the 28-year-old Sprint Queen maintains her usual breakneck speeds and wins the gold, she will be one of the greatest women track stars of all time. Florence's road to the top began right here in Watts, one of the roughest neighborhoods in the city of Los Angeles. These projects were her track. These tough streets were the first blocks that she exploded out of, her springboard out of the ghetto. I didn't know until I got older exactly what a ghetto was. I had a very happy childhood. I, didn't, I wasn't really aware of the area I was living in as a child until I got older and got out. But she was aware of her running abilities, and so was her family. Her mom says she showed early signs of separating herself from the crowd. Florence's mom, who's also named Florence. She ran as an infant when she was one and two years old. She competed against her sisters and brothers. I was the one that called, ready, set, go and she would take off as one and two years old. They ran races. She was running that early? Yes, because the backyard was large uh -huh. and to keep them occupied and have something to do, this was our pastime. One thing I was really struck by was how close Florence is with her entire family. And we are talking one big family, 10 brothers and sisters, and a mother who won't let her children be anything but the best they can be. Florence's mom also brought the family together for weekly powwows. Boom, boom, made it great to be crazy. Boom, boom, made it great to be crazy. She would make the kids lock all the doors and then tell each of her children what she liked and didn't like about their behavior that week. The family powwows continue today, a constant source of love, a constant source of strength. She was always number one to me in my heart. And I want you to know, Didi, when you go to sew and you bring back the other goal, you can give me mine back because... <laughs> There's so much out there that I want from track and field. I wanted a world record so bad. I wanted an American record. So when you have your eyes focused on something, you don't give up. Soon, Florence will be standing on a track in Seoul, South Korea, facing the biggest contest of her entire life. 20 years of running, 20 years of training, it all boils down to just a few seconds. She's got a great chance to bring home the gold, but even if she doesn't, she is still a champion. <laughs>